You may be seated. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to ask special blessings on the message that Ryan is getting ready to prepare. Just as the song says, you are eternal. And thank you so much, dear Lord, for preparing a home that's free from all the diseases that we have here and the stress and concerns. Let us just think about you as, as Ryan brings the message. Amen. Amen. Whew. I don't know about y'all, I about had it with the masks. Every time I climb up here, I'm out of breath. I feel blind from breathing and my glasses fogging up, and that is not a good way to start a sermon. Whew, okay. Is it just me, or does this Christmas season seem odd? It seems weird. We're doing an angel tree. Norma is actually putting it together for us this year. It's going to be a very condensed period that we have to, to go buy gifts and get them distributed and everything, but keep an eye out for that. But I went to go buy little gift labels for our gifts for the angel tree last week, and I went to a handful of stores, some of which didn't have anything, some of which had labels, but they said everything they could possibly say except Christmas. Christmas has become... I don't know, offensive in a lot of ways to a lot of people. And so you can't even find Christmas stuff anymore. Uh, it, you have to go dig it out, search for it. And I honestly got to the point where I came back. I, I found some. I found peanuts. Even the peanut stuff didn't have the word Christmas on it. And I, finally, I got disgusted with the whole thing. I put them down. I came back here. Honestly, I was getting kind of mad. Like, it's just not happy with it. Why can't I find Christmas stuff at Christmas? But it just kind of goes with the rest of the year. 2020 has just been a long year. And I don't understand how I can have days that just seem to go on for days. And weeks that go on for months. And Christmas snuck up on me. And here we are finding ourselves at the end of an incredibly long year, and it's Christmas. Yet here we are. And part of me, because of everything that 2020 has been, part of me just wants to rush right on past Christmas and get to 2021 and see if we can't just start all over again. And at the same time, I, I feel like I'm being pulled in a hundred different directions. Uh, as a pastor, Christmas can almost start to begin to feel like an academic exercise. You know, okay, we're at Christmas time. We need to make sure that we decorate right. Check. Except for the fact that that light used to be green, but if you step on the cord, it changes colors. So it got jarred, and now it's blue. There we go. Decorate right. Make sure you preach right. We've got to preach about the right things. Uh, we've got to have the right church programs in place because it's Christmas. Uh, we've got to sing all the right songs because everybody has their favorite Christmas songs. And don't forget the Christmas offerings. By the way, Lottie Moon, we have a $1,000 goal as a church, so don't forget to give to Lottie Moon. We have all of those things that are going on and surrounding us. And that's why it is so important for us as a church right now, this Central message of this series is so important Excuse for us me, Ryan. to focus. Hey, Ryan, 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 got a question. Yeah, sorry. What? Since Thanksgiving's over, I was wondering when can we start decorating for Christmas? I got a whole bunch of Christmas trees. Last year I put up 17. This year I'm going for 21. And I need to start decorating. So, what's your thoughts about that? When can uh, we start? I, I don't know. Is this the can't wear white pants after Labor Day thing? I, I don't know. Uh, but it's really important well, that we focus. Since we're on asking questions. <sighs> I'd like to have a good baked ham recipe. I got folks coming in, and mine didn't turn out so good last year. And and also, I'd like to have some dessert recipes that don't pack on the pounds because I've already overdone it for Thanksgiving. Can anybody help? Uh, well, I mean, I I can hold my own in the kitchen, but I don't know if this is the right. It, it's important that we oh, focus. Man. I, right. I've got company coming into town, you know, and I got to get the dogs groomed. I've got to get the horses fed. And I could use that. I could use that ham recipe too, if anybody's got one. To share that with me. I mean, that would really be good. I, why were you guys all looking over there? I said we need to focus on the message. 
And you see how easy it is for us to be distracted this time of year with everything that's going on. There's so much that's vying for our attention every second of the day. And it leads to to just being completely distracted. We look out and as we're getting ready for Christmas, it's okay, when is the right time for me to go get a Christmas tree? Do I pull out the fake one? Do I go cut a new one? Do I put it up? Do I bring out the kids' old ornaments? Is it time to put them away and move on to more grown-up ornaments? What am I going to cook for Christmas? Am I going to make a ham? Because the ham didn't go well last year. I could do a turkey, but I just did turkey for Thanksgiving. So I don't know about that. Maybe if I cooked it differently. And I've got 20 people coming over, and I've got to figure out where I can seat them. Maybe I can bring up another chair, uh, and maybe another table if I need to, uh, whatever the case is. Um, you know, cleaning, my goodness, we have all these people coming in. I, I've got to get the house cleaned. I've got to get the guest room straightened up. I've got to get new sheets on there. Um, man, the dog sheds like crazy. I have a German shepherd in every room sitting on the floor. Um, And by the way, if you're listening to this right now online, click like. This is a test to see how many people are actually listening. Um, Click like on Facebook. And we can make it through the entire Christmas season without Christ. The whole thing. We can go without mentioning Christ and everything that's flying through our heads There's so many distractions, holidays are hectic, and we're so focused on preparing for Christmas that we forget to prepare for Christ. I really struggled trying to figure out what the the theme of this message was this morning. Put put Christ back in Christmas. I don't know. Give yourself permission to step back from Christmas so you can see Christ. Both of those just kind of seemed like a a plea to try to find some time to squeeze Jesus into Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. We hear that a lot, and it's true, mostly. Is he the reason for this season? Some say you can't have Christmas without Christ. Yeah, you can. We have millions of people that do it every single year that have Christmas without Christ. But without Christ, Christmas is just stuff. It's good and bad stuff, but it's just stuff. Family time is good stuff. Generosity is good stuff. Stressing out over the house getting clean, maybe not so good stuff. Unless your house is in really bad shape. All sorts of good and bad stuff. But you know, I hope I left that in. I don't think I did. The devil is the, the definition, the biblical definition of foolish. But he's not stupid. And if he can't change the meaning of Christmas then he can let us have so much good stuff that we forget the best stuff. And I think that's where a lot of people are at right now. Without Christ at the center, Christmas is just going to be another busy time of year that comes and goes. It's going to leave us more exhausted than when we started, wondering why we didn't get more out of this time of year. How do we keep that from happening to us again this year? How can we use this time in a way that is meaningful and has lasting significance? The early church, the early church saw the significance of this time of year. Advent is a Latin word. It means coming, right? So they had the first advent of Christ and the second advent of Christ. The first coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ. Advent began being celebrated by the early church as early as the fourth century, And it was a period of self-reflection and Jesus reflection leading up to Christmas. They capitalized on that. By the Middle Ages, four Sundays had kind of become the, the standard for Advent season. And it was considered the beginning of the church year. So Happy New Year, this is the beginning of the church year, the first Sunday in Advent. Party, yeah. Happy New Year. So we're, you know, last year I, I preached 
a series of sermons that were kind of based loosely on the Advent candles and what they stand for and, and where we pulled that stuff from. We're, we're going to do something different this year. Um, this year, I'm going to preach a series on the coming of Christ. But before we get into the coming of Christ, we've got to start, and this is where we are today, we have to start on preparing to receive Him. So that's our thing this morning, preparing to receive Christ. And preparation is intentional. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 40 this morning, if you want to read along in your Bibles. I'm not going to read the entire chapter. It's a long chapter, uh, but I've got a couple sections I've pulled out just to kind of try to get into God's head on, on what He wants us to, to know about these. So starting in verse 3, the voice of one calling out, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That should sound familiar to you, even if you're not familiar with Isaiah. Because Matthew quotes this particular scripture as being fulfilled by John the Baptist. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. And let the uneven ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Now, this is not a reference to God making our path easy. It's a call to remove obstacles from the coming Messiah's path. That's what it is. This actually is a, a reference to a pagan practice back in the day, uh, back in Isaiah's day, where if they were going to be transporting an idol from one place to another, they would go make sure that the path of that idol's journey was made ready. They didn't want there to be things getting in the way of a safe, smooth trip for that idol. Isaiah's taking that same concept and saying, hey, we need to remove all the obstacles for the coming Messiah's path. That was also John the Baptist's main message, if you remember it. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance is removing one big obstacle, sin. That's repentance. So preparing this path and the reason why Matthew quotes it with John the Baptist is that is his task. John the Baptist is the one that came right before Jesus, leading into Jesus, that cleared that path, that made that path ready for the Messiah. Verse 5, then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Jesus is the glory of the Lord revealed. He's the fullness of of the presence of God in a way that we have never seen it before or since. And all flesh will see it together. Amen. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So the first way we need to be intentional is we need to make ourselves available to God. We need to remove those obstacles. We need to prepare ourselves, make ourselves available to God. God has spoken never more clearly or powerfully than in the person of Jesus Christ. Are we listening? Are we welcoming Him into our lives? God wants to come to us. But there's so many obstacles, so many distractions that we need to intentionally clear a path for Him. John the Baptist's task was to clear the way for Jesus as the Messiah, and all those who would welcome Jesus must still clear the clutter from their lives. Imagine Jesus knocking on the door at the house of a hoarder, and the hoarder can't even get to the door because there's so much clutter getting in the way. Jesus is still knocking. He can't even get there. That's what it looks like for so many people. So be intentional. Clear the clutter for the Lord's arrival. We also need to remember as we read this text that it's being spoken to Israel in the midst of exile, not at a time of national security and prosperity. This is at a time of exile. This is at a dark time. This is at a time when things look bad for Israel. But there's hope. Exile is not the last word for them. God has more in store for them, and the Lord's coming is not going to be in vain. This is what Isaiah is telling them. Starting in verse 9 now, go up on a high mountain, Zion, messenger of good news, raise your voice forcefully, Jerusalem, 
messenger of good news. Raise it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. God's people are always called to proclaim Him, to glorify Him, and it is still our calling now. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with His arm ruling for Him. Behold, His compensation is with Him and His reward before Him. And don't miss this, verse 11, like a shepherd he will tend his flock, in his arm he will gather the lambs and carry them in the fold of his robe. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. God will do these things. There is comfort in the certainty of his love and care for us. Huge comfort. And as we look around at everything that is going on in this crazy world right now, people need His loving care more than ever. And maybe, just maybe, some of them are more open to it during these crazy holiday times too. So another way we can be intentional is to make Jesus available to others, preparing them to receive Him. So make it a time of preparing others for Christ. Show them your actions. Remind them. Talk about Him. Do all those things. Don't be afraid. We're called to that. Skipping forward to verse 28. Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is unsearchable. Again, we look around at this current situation, we don't understand why things are happening the way that they're happening. But God is awake. He's still moving. He's still working in the midst of all this, just like He was back in Israel during those dark times for them. Even if we don't understand everything that He does, doesn't mean He's not over there working. He is. So we've asked it before a handful of times. Who among us is not just worn slap out from 2020? Everybody. You even bring up the year. Just say 2020 and everybody's first reaction is, that's it. It's been a rough year. Have there been times that you haven't felt like you had the strength to keep going? It's not surprising. I think all of us have had those times. Another way we can be intentional is by recognizing that His strength is offered to us. But we've got to seek Him continually. When we look at God and we look at the passage that we just read, He gives strength to the weary and to the one who lacks might he increases power. Giving and strengthening is part of who God is. That's part of His character. That's what He wants to do for His people. He wants that for us, but we've got to seek Him. He offers us that strength, that renewal in the midst of our weariness. When we, we realize that our strength and our power is not enough is when we start to realize, man, we need you, God. We need your strength. And whether it's from failing physical strength, failing emotional strength, even failing spiritual strength, God offers His own strength to us. And it is far greater than our own strength could ever be. And it's a wholly, wholly different strength than our own. It's, he says it here, it's as if uh, mounting up on the wings of eagles. You know, this is metaphorical here. It's not saying anybody's going to get wings and fly away. It's metaphorical, mounting up on wings of eagles. It's transformational strength. Transformational strength. There's nothing you can't do with God's strength. But so many people become helpless and hopeless when they realize that they don't have the strength for whatever it is that they're going through. That's their response. Well, then what do I do? They throw up their hands. Helpless, hopeless. Our job then is to speak Jesus into their life and let them see that they don't have to do it on their own. 
God will walk with them and give his strength to them. And God will and God's people will do the same. We got to be careful as we're looking at this time of preparation, as we look at everything going on, we talked about the devil being foolish and not stupid. All these good things, good things, we can't miss the great thing. And the great thing in the midst of this is Jesus. God intends for Christmas, for this season, to be an uplifting time for us. But you have to focus on Jesus for that to happen. Make time for Jesus. Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first, first, seek first. As we focus on the coming of Jesus Christ, that's what our whole series is going to be about. You make this Advent season one of preparation. Make it your goal. Make it your focus. You're not going to let anything else crowd that out. Think back. If you, if you want an illustration for this, Luke chapter 10, Mary and Martha. If you remember the story, Jesus comes to visit. Mary and Martha are sisters of Lazarus. They're good friends of Jesus. Jesus comes to them to spend some time with them, to fellowship with them. Martha, Martha is just about every one of us. Martha is running around like a chicken with her head cut off, trying to prepare a meal, trying to vacuum if she had one. I guess they didn't have rainbow vacuums back then. Trying to vacuum the house, trying to sweep the house. She's trying to get everything ready. She wants everything to be perfect for Christ being there. Meanwhile, Mary is just sitting on the ground at the feet of Jesus, listening to Jesus talk. And Martha says what? Jesus, can you please tell her to come help me? I've got a lot of work i got to get done here. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. Oh, God's word speaks across the ages. Verse 42, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will be, not be taken away from her. Give yourself permission to take a breath, to step away even from some good things and fill your mind and your life with Jesus. The main point of the sermon, if I could put one today, we have to intentionally prepare for Christ, to seek Him, to make Him the centerpiece of your holiday. If you're going to try to remember something, I guess remember that. Make him the centerpiece of your holiday. That's what you got to do if you're going to be refreshed by him during this time. And I think we all need to be refreshed right now. Don't miss this opportunity to be refreshed and renewed. Don't miss it. Be intentional and pursuing it by making room for Jesus in your schedule. Even beyond that, don't just make room for Him. Make Him the center and make everything else orbit around Him. That time, that focus, that reflection on Christ is what will bring you that refreshment and that renewal and that strength that you need and when your strength is renewed, you're prepared for helping others find Jesus and that same renewal and strengthening for them. If we don't have Christ, there's no reason for the, the holiday of Christmas to get started to begin with. If there's no Christ, there's no reason for the holiday to mean anything. If there's no gospel, no God incarnate, then there is no joy. There's no peace. There's no hope. We're going to be spending our Advent season looking at the three comings of Christ. That's right, I said three. Incarnation, that's the Christmas story. Habitation, Christ in us. Revelation, and no, I'm not going to give you a Bible study on the book of Revelation. 
That's the second coming. Each one of those has a critical impact on how we live our lives and especially how we live our lives for the Lord. And as we embrace these three encounters with Christ, imagine them as adding new logs to the fire of our love for Jesus and our desire to serve Him. Imagine beginning 2021 with a renewed love and commitment to the God who loves us, to the, to the Lord who saved us, and to the Spirit who guides us. Imagine being a church on fire for Jesus in the midst of a world gone cold with hate and callousness. Picture non-believers being drawn to the warmth of this church like campers drawn to the warmth of a bonfire. Let's stoke the fire in these cold times and warm our hands around the fire of our love for Christ. So if you will, let's, let's approach this series with that purpose in mind. And I hope you'll join us for the next Sunday's leading to Christmas. Again, the three comings, the three advents of Christ, His incarnation, His habitation, and His final revelation. And this year, let's worry less about celebrating Christmas and make sure that we celebrate Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are increasingly grateful for those brief moments of peace and quiet that we get to find in the midst of times like these. Lord, there is just more and more and more stuff that is getting packed into our lives. We're, we're told that if we're not doing this and not doing that and not taking our kids to play football or baseball on Sundays or not having them in classes every night of the week, not going to sports practices, not doing this, not engaging in that, that somehow we're not doing everything that we're supposed to be doing in our life. And Father, so much of that crowds out the one thing that we can focus on and feel refreshed and renewed, and that's Jesus Christ. Lord, I, I pray that you would instill a, an alarm clock of sorts in each of us that when we've gone too long without thinking about Christ, that you would wake us up and don't let us hit snooze again. Father, that we would be reawakened to how much we need Jesus every minute of our lives. Father, let this Advent season then be a time that we can catch our breaths, kind of hold the world at bay, as it were, and Father, just spend time at the feet of Jesus Christ, learning what it is He has to teach, seeing the type of life that He would model for us, and Father, just being grateful and thankful that we have a Savior who loves us and who is willing to die for us. Father, help us to live each day of our lives with that reality playing center stage. And Father, help us never to forget it and to let it animate everything that we do. We thank you for our time of worship this morning. Thank you for all those who are watching online, for all those who came out on a, a crisp morning to be a part of this worship and fellowship. Father, we pray that our time together has brought glory and honor to you, and we pray it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. This altar, as always now, I know we're going to sing another song, but it is open to anyone who has a burden that they need to leave at the foot of the cross. I'm here to share it with you. You can just come up here and give it to God so that you're not carrying it alone. Let His strength lift you up in the midst of whatever you're going through. And if you don't know Jesus, please come talk to me and, and let today be the day that your whole life changes. This altar is open. I pray that this time be blessed as well.